Let's learn how to size elements using CSS. In this lesson you will learn step by step everything you need to know about sizing your HTML elements. Basically there are two main dimensions when sizing elements. The height is the vertical dimension of an element and the width is the horizontal dimension. Let's have a look at some code. As always I have prepared a simple HTML file for you with three containers which we are going to size next. Let us start defining the width of container 1. To define the width of an element using CSS, we have to use the width property. Let's set the value to 100 pixels. Let's continue defining the height by setting the height property to a value of 200 pixels. Now let's have a look at the browser. And as you can see, container 1 has a different size than container 2 and 3. Let's practice that a little bit more by setting the width and height of container 2. Let's turn it around and set the width to 200 pixels and the height to 100 pixels this time. Check out the result in the browser. We could also use percentage values instead of pixel values for defining width and height. So let's set the width of container 3 to 50% and observe the result in the browser. Now if we change the width of the browser window, the width of container 3 will always be 50% of the width of the browser window. And of course we can also use percentage values for the height of an element. So let's set the height of container 3 to 10%. Next I'm going to introduce you to viewport values. Let's change the width of container 1 to 100 VW. But what does VW mean, you might wonder. It's pretty easy. 100 VW means 100% of the width of the browser window. The dimensions of the browser window are also called viewport. That's what the V in VW stands for. VH is the same thing as VW but for the height and not the width. But what is the difference between a width of 100% and 100 VW? Because at first they might look like doing the same thing. But they are not. Let me demonstrate this. First let's add another container around container 1 and give it the ID parent1. Next let's set the width of parent1 to 300 pixels. The width of 50% of container 1 is now referring to the 300 pixels of parent1. 50% of 300 pixels are 150 pixels. And as you can see container1 takes up half of the size of its parent. Now let's change the width of container1 to 80% and have a look at the browser again. We will see that container1 takes up 80% of its parent. Let's change the width of container1 back to 50%. And as you can see, container 2 is larger than container 1 and that's because the 50% of container 1 are referring to the width of parent 1 and the 50% of container 2 are referring to the width of the browser window. It's also possible to limit the maximum width and height by using the max width and max height properties. I have already set some max width properties to the containers. Have a look, if I decrease the size of the browser window and increase it again, the size will stop growing at one point. It will stop growing when the size of each container reaches its max width definition. Of course we can also set a maximum height by using the max height property. Let's put some more text into container 3 to demonstrate the max height. And now with a max height of 200 pixels, we can notice in the browser that the height of the content is bigger than the height of container 3, because we have limited it to 200 pixels. Ok, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So have a great day and happy learning!